Good afternoon, everyone, and happy Friday. I hope everyone's Friday is um, getting off to a great start. I hope everyone had a wonderful morning and enjoying their day at work, at school, or at home, wherever you're at today. I'm just praying and hope that it is a wonderful day and that you're in, you're going to enjoy it and it's filled with many blessings and love and peace and all those wonderful things that um God gives us. And showers us with. So, um, how was your night, everyone? Did you have a wonderful, great night? Peaceful rest and sleep? I hope it was. Uh, mine was pretty great. My day was great. Started out good. Um, got up, got the kids together, and ended up going back to sleep afterwards. And I thank God because I can get my kids up in the morning. You know, I get them up every morning early. And um, I do devotion and prayer with them. And normally, I, depending on what's going on, I'll probably stay up and get myself together and do whatever it is that I need to do. Um, but if I choose to go back to sleep, then I can do that. Because oh, I can. all I can say is, by God's grace, um, my kids can get up. I have a, um, my three younger ones that are home that are still in school. Um, my fifth grader, my seventh grader, and my ninth grader. So yeah, I got elementary school, middle school, and high school. It's been a while since I had that back when my oldest daughter was here and stuff. I had elementary, middle school, and high school. So now it's back to that elementary, middle, and high school. But um, they can get online and do what they need to do. I don't really have to, I don't have to really, you know, stay on them and be in the room and watching over them. Okay, what are you doing? And they're playing, doing all kind of extra stuff besides what they're supposed to be doing. They're online and they're doing their part. So I thank God for that, that I don't have to be on them consistently throughout the day and making sure that they're doing what they're supposed to be doing because they're pretty much doing what they're supposed to be doing. They're online like they're supposed to be, you know, they're doing their work. So... Thank God that they're doing that. So I went back to sleep after, not long after I got them up and we did pray and devotion and I went on back to sleep for a little bit and then I got back up and went, you know, did my little routine, my walking and my jogging and stuff and doing my little exercise. And so I got to get my garage cleaned out. So I got my husband on the way to the dump site now trying to dump trash out because I've been ordering like crazy from Amazon this year and just had wukus of boxes in the garage that I need to get thrown away. So those are on the way to the dump site now. So I'm going to get out there and try to clean it out again. I really don't feel like doing it, but it needs to get done. And while I feel the need to do it now, I'm going to go ahead and get it out there. And I'm going to be glad I did it. So that's how my morning and afternoon has been going. So I hope that yours is great. So let's get off into um, Exodus 23. Um, Exodus 23, which is entitled Laws of Justice and Mercy, Sabbath Laws, the Three Annual Festivals, and God's Angel to Prepare the Way. Yesterday, Exodus 22, just a recap of that, um, just going back into the laws that had that God had Moses set before the people about the protection of the property and the social responsibility and stuff. So here we are here in um, Exodus 23, still going over some of the laws and some of the things that um, God wants the people to do and some of the things he doesn't want them to do. So we're going to get into that. And so we're going to Go off into prayer and then we'll get right into Exodus 23. Father, thank you. Thank you for seeing us through this week. Lord, for some, it might have been a hard week, Father. And for others, it might have been, might have been easy breezy, Father. But I thank God that you got us all through it, Lord. Thank you for your protection your grace, your mercy, your love. Thank you for wisdom and thank you for seeing us through. God, I ask that you just please forgive us of our sins, known and unknown, Father. And God, I just ask that you pour out your spirit upon us right now, Lord, as we read, as I read, God, and as in many others that will be on now and later, Father, I ask that you will pour out your spirit. Give us wisdom, Father. Give us understanding in your word. Father, whatever it is that we are in need of learning, Father, that you want us to know 
I ask that you pour it out upon us, Father, and help us to understand this scripture, Exodus 23, as we read it, Lord. Thank you so much for being able to read and share your word with others, Lord. And for the things that I may not know and understand, God, I ask that you just help me to be able to learn it and understand it, Father, by doing research or blessing someone that will be able to give me insight. But Father, help us to be able to give insight on your word, help us to learn it, help us to apply it, and may it be a blessing continuously in our life, Father. But help us to continue reading your word each day, gaining all the wisdom and knowledge that we need from your word, Father. But Father, just be with us and please help us. Thank you so much for all that you do. Open our hearts and our minds to receive, Father, and remove any distractions, Father. Thank you so much, Father. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, so Exodus 23, laws of justice and mercy. Do not spread false reports, which is something that we read back in Ex um, Exodus 20. The um, One of the commandments was saying, do not bear false witness against thy neighbor. Um, don't tell lies. And that was um, commandment number nine. You should not give false testimony against your neighbor. And so here we're saying the laws of justice and mercy, which is in saying that um, do not spread false reports. Do not help a wicked man by being a malicious witness. So, so that's like um, a person that you know has committed a bad crime, an act, a ugly crime, an evil act. Do not partner with him to spread lies by saying, oh, this person did it and take take off what what this, this you know, this person did it. And yet you're partnering with this person to tell a lie, to put it off on someone else. And you know that that person didn't do it. That person is innocent. But this person that you're working with, you know, they did it and they're innocent. They're guilty. And yet you're helping this wicked person get away with something that they did when they should pay the penalty for whatever it is that they have done. But instead, someone else is being accused of this crime and having to probably suffer the consequences behind it. Because we know that there are people out there that are suffering the consequences behind someone else's crime, something that they did not do. So here it is saying, do not false, do not spread false reports and do not help a wicked man by being malicious, being a malicious witness. Do not follow the crowd in doing wrong. When you give testimony in a lawsuit, do not pervert justice by siding with the crowd and do not show favoritism to a poor man in his lawsuit. Do not go with the crowd. Just because all everybody else out here doing they're doing all of this. And you might have 10, 15, 20 people saying one thing, but you know it ain't right. You know it ain't true. So don't just go with it because, hey, everybody else is doing it, so let me go with it. Don't do it. Um, don't show favoritism to someone because we do it sometimes. You know, there are people that do it. You show favoritism. Oh, because this person may be rich or may have more money or smell better or whatever, but yet this person may have less, but yet you treat this person better than this person and it's not cool because this person may be less have may, may have less than the other person so we choose to favor with the crowd and what they're saying against this person that has more versus this person that has less no don't do that that's not right that's not right um, if you come across your enemy's ox or donkey wandering off, be sure to take it back to him. If you see the donkey of someone who hates you falling down under its load, do not leave it there. Be sure you help him with it. So just because you hate someone, just because that person may hate you, don't just be like, oh, well, I'm not going to help them. I'm going to keep them moving. I'm not going to do nothing for them. No, you be the better person. And that's another, that's a situation where you can let your light shine because that person hates you. For whatever reason that person may hate you, you show them love in a situation by helping them in whatever it is that they may be helping you with. Because maybe they don't know what love is. Maybe they don't know. They've never been shown it. So let your light shine before man by doing good things before man. And not just doing it before man, but doing it behind closed doors in your own household, being the light in your own household. Because what man may not see on the outside, those on the inside see it, God see it. So help others, even if they hate you. Be kind and help them if you see they're in need. Because we may not see it, but God does. 
Um, do not deny justice to your poor people in their lawsuits. Just because they're poor, don't deny justice for them. Help them in any way that needs to be. They need to be helped because they are in need. Have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death for I will not acquit the guilty. Hmm. There have probably been a lot of people that have been put to death and were innocent. And of course, we know that there are a lot of innocent men that have done time in prison for years. We heard of these stories. We, we see movies of these stories where these men have been accused of vicious or bad things and had to do so much time for it. And eventually, as time progressed, um, they ended up getting more evidence or people may have spoken on their behalf or however the case may have been. And they were acquitted of those crimes and got out and they ended up finding the the, the right person who committed these crimes. And it's almost like um, thinking about far as like lawyers. In that case, lawyers, attorneys, if you know a person is guilty, you know they're guilty. Do you defend them or not? And when you defend them, are you defending them because you feel like they have a fair chance at trial because you feel like you can get them off because you're good at your job? Or do you defend them because you feel like, well, I want the money. I need the money. So I'm going to take this case for the money. Why do you defend them? Um, but should we, should every person that we know that is guilty have that right to a trial to defend themselves and stake their claim in court and lie in court when they know they're guilty? Is that right to do as a lawyer or an attorney? Would that be right to defend that person because we know that they're guilty? So have nothing to do with a false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death. So if you know this person is innocent, have nothing to do with this false charge and do not put an innocent or honest person to death. Okay, do not accept a bribe for a bribe blinds those who see and twist the words of the righteous. Have nothing to do with bribes. Because you know, sometimes bribes, we see bribes. Mm -hmm. Ugh, we see that a lot in movies. But um, do not accept the bribe because you know, um, it's so easy for some people to accept bribes. Oh, hey, well, if you do this, I'll give you this. And sometimes it can be so tempting and you want to take that bribe, but it's not good because it may be at the expense of an innocent person who may be charged or having to pay a penalty for something or going down for something that they did not do or cause them to look a certain way that's not right. Their, um, their character may be being put on blast and it may destroy that person and who they are and just, just don't have anything to do with the bride, regardless of how tempting or how good the bride may look or sound, don't have anything to do with it. And sometimes brides can be where someone may be threatening you. If you don't do this, um, if you don't do this, I'm going to do this. So the bride can come in different ways, but don't have anything to do with it, especially when you know it's not right. Um, do not oppress an alien, which in other words, a stranger. You yourselves know how it feels to be aliens because you were aliens in Egypt. So that was the laws of justice and mercy. Here are the Sabbath laws. For six years, you are to sow your fields and harvest the crops. But during the seventh year, let the land lie unplowed and unused. Then the poor among your people may get food from it, and the wild animals may eat what they leave. Do the same with your vineyard and your olive grove. Six days do all your work, but on the seventh day do not work, so that your ox and your donkey may rest, and the slave born in your household and the alien as well may be refreshed. 
Be careful to do everything I have said to you. Do not invoke the names of our gods. Do not let them be heard on your lips. So he received what, six days. And remember that was also in the, um, the Ten Commandments, which was the fourth commandment to remember to keep the Sabbath day holy. For in six days you shall labor the light and work the same thing. So on the seventh day, you were to not do any work, but you were to rest on that seventh day because remember God rested on the seventh day after he created all creation within those six days. He rested on the seventh day. So here God is reassuring us. Remember, we are always saying how God always continues. We, re we see repeats of what he says in his word. So we're seeing here again, he's telling us to, um, for the six days to do all of our work. Well, on the seventh day, do no work. Um, so that was the Sabbath law. So here are the three annual festivals. Three times a year, you are to celebrate a festival to me. Celebrate the feast of unleavened bread. For seven days, eat bread made without yeast, as I commanded you. Do this at the appointed time in the month of Abed. For in that month, you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty handed. Celebrate the feast of harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your field. Celebrate the feast of in gathering at the end of the year. When you gather in your crops from the field, three times a year all the men are to appear before the sovereign Lord. Do not offer the blood of a sacrifice to me along with anything containing yeast. The fat of my festival offerings must not be kept until morning. Bring the best of the first fruits of your soil to the house of the Lord your God. Do not cook a young goat in its mother's milk. So that was um, the part that was entitled the three annual festivals that God wanted them to celebrate to him um, three times a year. Um, and also God's angels, God's angel to prepare the way. Okay. See, I am sending an angel ahead of you to guard you along the way and to bring you to the place I have prepared. Pay attention to him and listen to what he says. Do not rebel against him. He will not forgive your rebellion since my name is in him. If you listen carefully to what he says and do all that I say, I will be an enemy to your enemies and will oppose those who oppose you. My angel will go ahead of you and bring you into the land of Amorites, Hittites, Perizzites, Canaanites, Hivites, and Jebusites, and I will wipe them out. Do not bow down before their gods or worship them or follow their practices. You must demolish them and break their sacred stones to pieces. Worship the Lord your God and his blessing will be on your food and water. I will take away sickness from among you, and none will miscarry or be barren in your land. I will give you a full lifespan. I will send my terror ahead of you and throw into confusion every nation you encounter. I will make all your enemies turn their backs and run. I will send the hornet ahead of you to drive the Hivites, Canaanites, and Hivites out of your way. But I will not drive them out in a single year because the land will become desolate and the wild animals too numerous for you. Little by little, I will drive them out for you until you have increased enough to take possession of the land. I will establish your borders from the Red Sea to the Sea of the Philistines and from the desert to the river. I will hand over to you the people who live in the land and you will drive them out before you. Do not make a covenant with them or with their gods. Do not let them live in your land or they will cause you to sin against me because the worship of their gods will certainly be a snare to you. That concludes Exodus 23. And you see how we continue as we read, we still see how God talks about do not um, bow down or worship other gods. He, we see this all the time. We, as we read, God continues to say, do not worship other gods. Do not worship their gods. Do not do this. Do not do that. Because 
this was a command of God to not serve other gods. Because again, as I said, stated before, everything that God continues to tell them not to do is because we also we see and we hear, we see it now, and we also read in the, um, the word of God that that's what the people were going to be, that, that's what some of the people were doing. That's what some of the people were going to be doing. And that's what some of the people will still continue to do. And some that may have done it, they stopped doing it. Some didn't. But everything that God is saying not to do is because he knows this is what some of these people were going to be doing. And some will con some that will have continued to do. And so I like that as we continue to read that God continues to let us know what not to do. He continues to repeat himself and let us know. So it's, we can't stumble and be confused at what God does not want us to do, especially when he says it multiple times as we read. This is what you are not to do. How can we stumble? How can we um, forget or mess up and do it wrong if throughout the word, when we read it, God is continually telling us, don't do it, don't do it, don't do it. We as parents have to tell our children over and over again, don't do this. You know, we have to, we sometimes have to continue to lay down our rules. You know, hey, you're not supposed to do something. I told you these rules, but we still have we still find ourselves reassuring them, letting them know, putting in their mind, let it stick. Hey, don't do this. And sometimes we very often have to be reminded of God's word and what we are not to do. We know we're not supposed to do some of these things, but sometimes we have to go back into the text and read it. Hey, I'm not supposed to be doing this. Why am I doing this? I'm not supposed to be doing this. God has told me over and over again, this is not what I'm supposed to do. And I read it in different chapters and different books, what not to do. So my takeaway is continually let God speak to you and let guide you into what you should not do in your own life, in your household, outside of your household. Let God's words continue to meditate your heart and mind as to the things that you should not be doing. Because God will not have you. God does not want you to do these things. God wants you to live a certain way. He wants you to abide in his ways. Why? Because he knows what's best for you. He knows what's best for you. And the fact that he knows what's best for you, why wouldn't he know what's best for you? He created you. He, take care, he takes care of you. He provides for you. He does all these things for you. So just as a parent, do you let you set down rules for your children? When you teach your children, when you have, when you bear your children and you have your children and you're raising your children, you put down rules for your children. This is what you are not to do. This is what you can do. This is what you're not to do. And why do you set down rules for your children? You set down rules for your children because if you don't, your children are going to be all over the place. They're going to be doing all these different things, saying all these crazy things and just doing whatever it is they want to do. So there has to be rules set in place for us so that we can abide by. It. Because if we don't have rules, you see the world now and how it is. Imagine if we didn't have rules. It would be worse than what it is. But because of the fact that we have rules, many of us, choose to abide in those rules because we know that it's best. It is what's right. But a world without rules, a household without rules, a job without rules, a business without rules would be chaotic. So that is my takeaway. So understand rules are not to confine you or to, um, um, what's that word? Um, to hinder you or to restrict you or to um, put a hold on you. I, I can't think if I'm using the same right words, but those are some of the words that I can think of. But rules are not to imprison you. Rules are for your own benefit. 
God's rules are for your own benefit to help you because God sees your future. He knows your future. He knows what's best for you. And God, God wants you to be in that place that he envisions for you. So that's why he puts these rules down for you because he knows man's hearts and our minds and our hearts and minds can be so wicked and so ugly. And if God just let us be and didn't give us rules, we would have our way with those thoughts and what in our, with those thoughts and our ways. So God loves us far more than that to give us rules so that we can have something to go by something that we can follow so that we can make it to that place that God has for us to make it to. So thank you for listening. And I pray that you enjoyed Exodus 23. And it has given you some insight on some of God's ways and his laws that he put before uh, the people when he um, brought them out of Egypt. I pray that that was a um, lightning, I mean, it was a enlightener for you and that you were blessed by it and that everything that you are listening to and learning and reading and that we're sharing, to, whatever, everything that we're learning and reading and sharing together, that it will be fulfilling to you and that you share with others and um, that you, you gain insight from it and it makes you want to read more and continue to learn more and continue to gain more knowledge in his word so thank you again for tuning in today thank you so much for tuning in throughout the week all week with me and um continue to uh share um drop your comments below i would love to hear from them uh, i would love to hear your comments and um any concerns or cares that you may have drop them below i would definitely i will um uh, read them give you my feedback on it and uh, however but um please comment um and share also and continue to go on continue each day monday through friday continue going on this journey with me and as we continue to read throughout the bible um chapter to chapter at, until we and throughout Exodus and all the rest of the books in the order that they are in until we get to the last one, Revelations. So continue. I pray that you continue to go with me on this journey and that um, these scriptures are great blessing and that it is encouraging, it's uplifting to you. And um, whatever may have blessed you, share that. Let me know. Um, you can subscribe to my YouTube channel. I also have a YouTube channel. So I send this on my YouTube channel as well and on my um, Instagram page. So thank you for your time and your support. And I want to leave you all with a word of prayer and we'll go from there. Heavenly Father, thank you for this time. Lord, I thank you for using me to be able to read your scripture through, read each book and each chapter or each scripture each day. Thank you, Father, for allowing me to do this. And sometimes I may feel like I'm not doing enough. Sometimes I feel like it's not enough. I don't know if I'm reaching anybody or if anybody's listening or paying any mind, Father, but God, even if it's just that one person, it's a blessing. So just help me to not get discouraged or give up, but help me to keep going. And I just pray that each chapter may be a blessing for many that read. And it'll be a blessing to me as well, God, because I'm learning as well. So help us to continue to learn together and share together and grow together. Bless everyone out there, Lord. Bless my children here, my husband, Father. Bless my family, my friends, God, my neighbors, my coworkers, my classmates, I'm sorry, um, my classmates and teachers. Bless my church family. God, bless everyone in this entire world, all of my social media family, God, everyone, God. And just see us through the rest of this day. And I ask God that you will bring blessings upon everyone, Lord, that you will give them insight, wisdom, and understanding in your word. God, that you will draw them closer to you, Father. 
and that you will bring healing, comfort, and peace, and deliverance, and protection upon them and their families, Lord God. Please bless us throughout this day, God, as your Sabbath is approaching, Father, and as we read in your commandments, Father, the fourth commandments about your Sabbath, and six days we shall labor and do all our work, but the seventh day is your Sabbath, Lord, and we should rest in it and do no work. And we also just read it again, God, your Sabbath laws, Father. So help us to do all our work in these six days, Father. And on your Sabbath day, Father, help us to not do any work, but rest on your Sabbath day. Help us to honor your Sabbath day each week, Father. Continue to see us through, Father. Heal and amend every broken heart, every lost soul out there, those who are ready to give up, Father. Give them the power and strength to not give up. But Father, send your love and your light and your blessings our way, God. And lift us up, God, for those that are lost and weak and just down, Lord. Be with us and help us. Bless this day. Bless your Sabbath, Lord, as it's soon approaching. And just see us through. Help us have a great day. Help us to endure and persevere throughout all of it, Father. Thank you, God, for your teaching of your word and the learning of your word. God, thank you for all of it. Please be with us throughout the rest of this day. We thank you so much and we love you. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for us and for interceding for us and for coming back for us. And for God, thank you for your only begotten son who you allowed to give his life for our sins. Thank you for your holy angels. Thank you for your Holy Spirit. And thank you for your word. And thank you for a blessing, for the blessing that lies within your word. Thank you for what you have done in our lives. Thank you for what you're still doing. And thank you for what you'll continue to do. Bless this prayer and bless all those that have heard Bless those to receive. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let the words of our mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Amen. All right, everyone. Have a great day and I will have a wonderful weekend. Do not forget, please be a blessing to others. Be kind to others. Help those that are in need and not just those that you love and care about. Others, because remember, God said that was the greatest command. One of the great, the second greatest command was to love others. So, as the, your first greatest command was to love God with all your heart, mind, soul, and the second one was to love others as you love yourself. Love others. So, and not just loving those who love you back, but love others, even if they hate you, even if they despise you. Love them. Help them if they're in need. Be kind to others, even if they're being rude and ugly to you. Show humility and humble yourselves before God and let God's power work through you and bless others and pray for others, uplift them, be encouraging and um, forgive those who have hurt you. Because remember, God says, if you do not forgive those who, um, if you do not forgive those for things that they have done against you, God will not forgive you. But if you forgive them, he will forgive you. So remember that it's very important. So please forgive those. Pray, 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 pray without ceasing. Okay. And don't forget to wash, mask up, and social distance, y'all. Be safe out there. Drive safe and have a wonderful, wonderful, great, safe weekend. And I will talk that with you, God willingly, Monday. I love you all.